Welcome back, nieces and nephews, to GWAP, which stands for Just Everything with Auntie Pookie Podcast. I'm your host, Sydney, or as many know me as Auntie Pookie. For this whole month of February, I'm going to be honoring a lot of historical black people. So I hope you enjoy this little history lesson. And today I am honoring Sojourner Truth. She was born in Rifton, New York, and she passed away November 26th in 1883. She was a former slave, but she was also an American abolitionist of New York, Dutch heritage, and a woman's rights activist. Even though she was born into slavery, she was eventually able to escape with her infant daughter into freedom in 1826. And a fun fact, her name actually wasn't Sojourner when she was born. She actually went by the name Isabella. And she changed her name because she felt like God gave her that name. Let me tell you something, when God speaks to you, you gotta listen. And her name being to stay a while. So I wonder, since she heard it from God, like, did it mean she needed to stay a while in the situation she was or the circumstances so that she can have the ability to help do the things she was gifted and told to do? After she was free, she became known for her speech with the famous refrain, Ain't I a woman? She delivered this speech at a woman's convention in Ohio in 1851. If you haven't heard the speech, it's really empowering and really amazing. You should listen to it. A little bit of her backstory before she became who she was, this phenomenal woman. She was actually auctioned to a man named John Neely, or Neely, I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, for just $100 and a flock of sheep. It's like, if you really think about $100 today, $100 is nothing. It's like 50 cents, it feels like. And John was very abusive, and he always would beat up Sojourner, and it was just wild. And then she was sold two more times by the age of 13. By the time she was 18, she ended up falling in love with a man named Robert. And they couldn't even marry because they were owned by two different slave owners. Like, how jacked up is that? You're in love and you can't even, like, pursue things to a further level because you have two different slave owners. I just couldn't imagine being owned by somebody. I mean, I do feel like the government be owning us, but uh, I do feel like this is just crazy. The kicker to her love story as well, since she was unable to marry Robert, who she was really in love with, she ended up having to marry another person who was owned by the same owner of slaves. Um, she had to marry, his name was Thomas, and they had five children together. It's crazy, too. So the person that owned her, you know, once she was 18, whose name was DeMont and also who Thomas was under as well, um, he promised to grant her freedom on July 4th of 1826 if she would do well and be faithful. It's just like, if you do well and be faithful to me, I'll let you go. Yeah, crazy. When the date arrived, he literally lied and was like, nah. It's not happening. Just imagine, like, getting promised something, like a promotion, or a new house, new car, whatever, and then it's just like, haha, just kidding, April Fool's. Just, just terrible. But once he lied, she was like, I'm not dealing with this, and she later escaped, you know, with her daughter. And she stated that she didn't run off. She just literally took a walk off. Like, peace, deuces. You gonna lie to me? I'm out of here. And it sucks because she literally could only take one of her kids because her other kids were legally bound to uh, do mom, you know, her slave owner. So once she was able to escape, she made it all the way to New York where she was taken in as a free person by Isaac and Maria. They, um, or last name Van Wagenen. I'm probably saying these names all wrong. Um, crazy Dumont came to reclaim her and the the Van Wagendens offered to buy it, um, truth services from him for $20 until they had the anti-slavery law emancipating all enslaved people, which took effect in 1827. And Dumont, he eventually agreed. Eventually, later down the road of Truth's life, she became the first black woman to sue a white man and actually win. 
And what's crazy is once the anti-slavery law passed, Dumont illegally sold one of her kids who was five years old. His name was Peter. With the help of the people that she came to as a free person. And then she filed a lawsuit and um, to get him back and everything. She won her case and regained custody of her son. And that's why she became the first black woman to sue a white man in the U.S. And to succeed in that. Just to comment on that, it's just wild how so many things have changed in the laws and people still don't, they don't care, you know, and that's what's going on now in our world. It's like, we literally, I don't know if many people know, but we literally just got rid of the lynching law in March and we are in 2022. So that just goes to show you (laughs) things are crazy and that's all I can say. So after the court hearing and everything and her winning, she actually moved from the Van Wagonins, Wagonins, (laughs) their name just kills me and I know I'm saying it wrong. (laughs) So, uh, yeah, she, um, you know, left and she moved to New York City with her son and she ended up working as a housekeeper for this preacher named Elijah. And so then three years later, she decided to work for a different preacher whose name was Robert. And when Elijah passed her and the other pastor were accused of poisoning Elijah and stealing from him but they were acquitted because there was no evidence later down the line she became heavily devoted in Christianity and that's when she started preaching all over the place and she enjoyed preaching the gospel and speaking out against slavery and oppression going back to that's where she started her speech ain't I a woman and it was a very controversial speech But I feel like, of course, back in that time, since blacks were hated so much that any controversial or any um, speech that any black person had was going to be controversial. Shoot, it still is. Then in 1844, she joined the Massachusetts abolitionist organization called Northampton Association of Education and Industry. And then she met Frederick Douglass along that time and effectively launched her career as an equal rights activist. Twelve years after that, a white abolitionist and president of a convention published the account of her words in the National Anti-Slavery Standard. And he did put Ain't I a Woman um, to point out the discrimination that Truth experienced as a black woman. Um, Truth also helped slaves escape, you know, before the um, anti-slavery law was passed, just like Harriet Tubman. And she helped also recruit recruit black soldiers during the Civil War. Um, She worked in Washington, D.C. for the National Freedoms Relief Association, and she rallied up people to donate clothes and other supplies to black uh, refugees, which I think is phenomenal because I know that a lot of people back in that time of other color still felt very terrible for the things that were going on to African Americans, or I meant to say minorities in general. And I feel like they knew it was wrong so they tried to contribute under the table you know some um whites actually held some of the people who escaped from slavery um like in their barns basements and all that kind of stuff and they were probably having many heart attacks every time but they knew that it was wrong doing what they were doing truth also was a straight gangster just like Rosa Parks when Rosa Parks sat on the bus, but she also decided to sit on a whites only streetcar. And, you know, of course it was some drama. I just personally, it just kills me every time. And I laugh in the sense of just, just craziness that literally segregation was just so deep. Like you couldn't even sit in a particular spot. Like it just kills me. It really does. In closing, there's just so many things that she did and accomplished, and I feel honored that so many people have fought for us to be where we are today, even though we still struggle with racism and discrimination and all of the nonsense that we literally go to the grocery store and get attacked by someone who just wants to start some drama. Um, So yeah, I just, I'm very honored for True's commitment and her dedication, and I'm going to end with one of her quotes. She said, If the first woman God ever made was strong enough to turn the world upside down all alone, these women together 
ought to be able to turn it back and get it right side up again. And now they is asking to do it. The men better let them. Okay. You better let these women rise up. (laughs) Thanks for tuning in for my first day of honoring our black history.